In this video, I'm going to share a tip with you that's incredibly easy to implement and will make your pages load twice as fast, if not even faster, and that idea is responsive images. I was able to take a page that had just three images on it, a whole blog article with only three images, and I was able to reduce the amount of time it took for that page to load by 50%, so it was twice as fast, and I was able to reduce the amount of stuff downloaded on that page by over 50%, which is incredible. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And this page over on the right here is actually the blog article I'm talking about. It's all about how to do responsive images. I'll link it in the description for you. But as you can see, I have only three images on the entire page and these are not super massive or large images, but by implementing responsive images, I was able to drastically speed this page up by over doubling the actual page speed, which is crazy for a page that's relatively large, but only has three images on it. So if you have a more image heavy site or you just have a smaller site with more images, this is going to be absolutely amazing for you. So to show you exactly how this works, I have a really simple example here where I have one image, which is 1600 by 400 pixels. And no matter what screen size I'm on, whether I'm on a large screen or if I inspect this and I go down to like a really small mobile screen, for example, like this, it's still downloading this massive 1600 by 400 pixel image, which is not massive by actual image scales, but is much larger than I need to render on a 400 pixel wide screen. You know, I don't need a 1600 pixel wide image to render on a screen that's only 400 pixels wide. So what we can do is we can actually use a really cool property on images called the source set property. And this is going to allow us to change the size of image that we load on different screen sizes. And this is just one of the many techniques I'm gonna show you in this video to actually do responsive images. There's about three techniques I'm gonna show you, and this is the first and easiest to do. So what we can do is we can say on different screen sizes, we wanna download different images. So I'm just gonna copy over this URL because by default, we want to load this image on our largest screen size. So I'm gonna copy that down. So you paste the image that you want in, and then you put down the actual size that that image is. In our case, this is a 1600 pixel wide image. So you would think we would put 1600 PX, but instead we put 1600 W. And that's because this second unit here that we wanna specify, this is actually how wide our image is in actual intrinsic pixels. So the actual pixel value of our image. And our image is exactly 1600 pixels wide. And the reason we don't define this with CSS pixels like this and instead use W is because sometimes depending on your screen, maybe if you're super zoomed in or if you're on a screen that has a really high resolution, maybe you're on a phone with a really high resolution screen, you may have more actual pixels on your screen than the amount of CSS pixels. For example, one CSS pixel might correspond to four pixels on your screen. So this is just showing you how many pixels your image is so it knows how to render that based on how high resolution your screen is and how wide your screen is. So there's the very first thing we have, super straightforward. What we can do is we can just come in here and add a brand new thing on here. So we can say, what if we wanna do for an 800 pixel image? Well, I can change this image to be 800 pixels wide and I'll make it 200 pixels tall so it's the exact same ratio. And now I have two different images, one that is going to be 800 pixels wide and one that's 1600 pixels wide. I'm gonna do the exact same thing and come down here with another image that's even smaller at 400 pixels. And this one is going to be 400 by 100. Now, the last thing I need to do is make sure I comma separate these. And if I give it a save, it'll auto format so it's a little bit easier to read. And as you can see, this is what I have going on. You can see that I have this image right here, which is 400 by 100. And I'm saying the image itself is 400 pixels wide. Same thing here, URL to an image, it is 800 pixels wide. And here another URL, and this is saying this is 1600 pixels wide. Then we also have our source here as our fallback. The only reason this is there is in case you're using a really old outdated browser that doesn't support source set, it'll just default to whatever you put here. So generally just put your largest image size right here and that'll work fine. So now what the browser is going to do is it's going to look at the actual resolution of your screen as well as how wide your screen is to determine what image it needs to show based on your screen size. You may think that since my screen is only 389 pixels wide, it would show me a 400 by 100 image because obviously my screen is less than 400 pixels wide but I have a higher resolution screen than the default, so it's actually showing me a larger image. If I just come and paste this down right here, this is just a little bit of code that's every time I resize my window, it's going to update a bit of text that tells me how wide my window is, as well as what the ratio is in pixels. So you can see here that I have, if I zoom this in a little bit, it's a little hard to see, but essentially I have a 390 pixel wide screen and the ratio is 2.0. So essentially every single pixel on my screen corresponds to two CSS pixels. That's why we're showing a larger image. And as my screen increases in size, you're gonna see eventually it bumps me up to the 1600 by 400 ratio image, because again, it's at the point where we're saying, okay, you know what? We now need to render a larger resolution image to take into account the display resolution here, the ratio, as well as the width of my screen. Now, 
if I move us here out of the actual mobile mode, it'll be a little bit easier. I can zoom out to the point where I'm at a ratio of 1.0 because this is the easiest to show. And if I do a refresh here, I'll just decrease my screen size real quick. We'll go all the way down to 737 pixels. And if I do a refresh at this point, you'll see that I have an 800 by 200 pixel image showing up. And that's because my, my screen is 730 pixels wide. So essentially it's less than 800. As soon as my width becomes over 800 or close to 800, you'll notice it'll swap me to a larger image. So as I increase my size, you can see right when I get over 800 pixels and now bump me up to the next largest image because what essentially is happening is the browser says, okay, this image is 800 pixels wide and our ratio is one to one. So that's one pixel to one CSS pixel. And now we're at a ratio or at a size of 802 pixels. 802 is obviously larger than 800. So it bumps me up to whatever the next size is. And it does that all the time. So it's always constantly going to give me the next highest resolution image. But the really cool thing is if I scale my image or my screen back down, you'll notice it still keeps that 1600 pixel ratio image there. And the reason for that is because I already downloaded this really large image. There's no point in replacing it with a lower resolution image because we already downloaded a larger resolution image. So essentially what the browser does is it downloads the lowest resolution image it can that is large enough that you won't notice it at all based on the different sizes that you specify here. So it's always going to try to give you the smallest image while still giving you the best quality. And if for some reason your screen increases in size, as you can see here, it's going to download the newer, larger image to replace that older image that's no longer large enough. This is really great because mobile users now can download a much smaller image while desktop users can download a larger image based on their screen size and you're no longer sending down really large images to a mobile user who doesn't actually need it. Now this is really great but there's a few different things you can add to this to make it a little bit more customizable because for example what happens if my image is actually only 50% of this my screen size. You can see here that I'm rendering a 1600 pixel wide image on a 1300 pixel wide screen. But the problem is I'm only rendering this at half my screen size. So really it's more like a 750 or 650 actually wide image that I'm showing on that 1300 pixel screen. So it should be a smaller size. And that's where this other attribute called sizes comes in. So I just come in here and I say sizes, by default, it's set to 100 VW, which just means that it's essentially comparing your screen size off of these image sizes here. It's just assuming your image is always taking up the full width of your screen, which in many cases is a good default. Default, But in our case, I know this image is 50% of my screen size, 50 VW. So here I can change this to 50 VW. And now if I just give my page a quick hard refresh here, you'll see it's actually rendering an 800 pixel wide image. And it's only going to go to the next larger size when my screen size becomes wider than 1600 pixels because it's only taking up half my screen size. I can also emulate that by zooming out as well because as I zoom out, my full width is going to change. So if I start to increase this, you can see I get to that 1600 pixels pretty quickly based on my zoom as well as the actual ratio of my screen size based on the width here. You can even take this a step further by adding media queries inside of your sizes. And I'm actually going to demonstrate this inside of my blog here because I have a really great example of a use case for this. So if we scroll down here, I just zoom in a little bit, you'll see that we have this sizes property and sizes can essentially take a comma separated list of different sizes. And it's always going to default to whichever one is the first one that returns true for the media query. Or if there's no media query, it's going to default to that one if none of the other media queries match. So in our case, we didn't pass a media query. So 50 VW is just always what was returned here. And in this case, what we're doing here is we're saying on a max width of 800 pixels, assume that my image is always going to be 100% of the screen size. But at the point where we're above 800 pixels, assume my image is never larger than 800 pixels wide. And the reason that I'm doing this is because as I increase my screen size on my blog, you'll notice that everything stays centered in the screen and it never gets wider than 800 pixels. But when I'm below 800 pixels, my image just takes up essentially the full width of my screen. So by doing this media query here, I'm saying, hey, on larger screen sizes, use 800 pixels as the size of my image. Otherwise on smaller screen sizes, use this 100 VW. And you can use any media queries you want. Just make sure if you have more than one media query that they're always going to resolve in the right order because whichever media query returns true first is going to be the one that's selected. If I scroll down here, you can see I have a media query of 800 pixels followed by one that's 500 pixels. This 500 pixel one will never actually get executed because 800 pixels is always going to return true first. So it's going to use this size instead of this size. So just make sure you order them properly. But if you have a site where essentially your image gets to a maximum size, media queries can be a great way to handle that. Or even if they get to a minimum size, again, a great way to handle that. Now, the last thing I want to mention about this sizes property is you can only essentially use pixels or you can use viewport width. You can't actually use the percentage unit. The percentage unit here is based on the actual size of the container it's inside of. And in order to calculate that, the browser needs to render your entire page to figure out what that percentage is. 
which means in order to download an image, it needs to render your entire page, then it can download an image, which is incredibly slow. Also, if downloading that image and rendering it changes the things on your page, it would need to re-download new images, and it's just overall a horrible thing. It would never work. It has infinite loops. It's super in-performant, so you can only ever use viewport units or some other concrete unit like a pixel unit, for example. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is going to be actually not even using the image tag, and instead it's going to be using the picture element, and this is really great if you want to show a different element on different screen sizes. I'll show you a quick example here of my blog. You can see on a large screen size, I have this really wide image, but as my screen size gets smaller, I actually swap to a completely separate image, and this image is overall a smaller size and also focuses on the thing that I want to be focused on because, as you can see here, as the image gets smaller, the focus of the person becomes harder to see, so the picture element is really great when you want to show a different image on different screen sizes, not just a different resolution, but an entirely separate image. So I'm going to show you how you can do that really easily using this picture element. So let's just get rid of everything that we have inside of here. We don't need any of this. And we're just going to put in a simple picture element. And a picture element, really importantly, needs to have an image tag inside of it. And that's just going to be your default image you show. So we can just come in here on a source. And inside my images folder, I have this hiking wide image as well as the hiking narrow based on what screen size I want. So by default, I'm going to use this wide size image. And if I just save, you can see it's rendering that out. And if I just give this a quick style, just so we can actually see the image without it being super wide, we'll say that the width is going to be, let's say 400 pixels. And to make this work, we just need to make sure we put this on our actual image tag itself. There we go. Now we have this image that's showing up on our screen relatively straightforward. And I'll just make it a little bit bigger. Let's say that we want it to be 600 pixels wide. There we go. So by default, it's going to use this wide image. But if I get down to a really small screen size, I probably want to use a different image. Luckily, with the picture element, this is incredibly easy to do. We have another element we can put inside of here called the source element. And the source element is very similar to an image in that we need to specify a source. But instead of using a source like this, we actually use a source set. And you can do all the same stuff you could do in the image tag source set. But generally, if you're using a picture element for this type of responsive image, you just want to paste in one normal URL. So we can just say images slash, and we have the hiking, and we want this to be our hiking narrow.jpg image. And then what we need to do is specify a media query for this to actually work at. So in our case, we're going to say here that our max width is going to be 500 pixels. So on any screen that is 500 pixels or less, it's going to render out this small image. Otherwise, it's going to render this large image. So if I shrink down my page size, you can see once we get below that 500 pixels, you can see it is now swapped over to using this image instead of the other image that we had. And the really nice thing about the picture element is it'll swap between images always, no matter what screen size you're at. So as I increase my screen size, you can see it swaps back. So it's always swapping between these two different images. This is very different than how the actual image source set property worked, because that would always just show you whatever the highest resolution image that you have downloaded is. While with the picture element, it's always swapping between the different images based on what size you're at, which is a much better experience if you actually want different images at different sizes. It's slightly less performant because if your user changes their browser from one size to another size, it'll have to download both images. But that's okay because you actually want them to show a different image at different sizes. It's more for like artistic design purposes than it is for performance purposes. But you also do get performance benefits because on the small screen size, you're downloading hopefully a smaller image. And if you had multiple images, for example, I had a medium sized image, I could come in here with 800 pixels. I could set this to like medium, for example, and now it's going to render out the correct one based on the different sizes that I have. I just need to make sure that I order these in the correct order so that 500 would come first, then 800, then my default image image right here. We can even somewhat see this in effect if I save and I start to increase my screen size. You can see here between 500 and 800 pixels, I don't have an image at all. So it's giving me a blank image. And then boom, once I get above that 800 pixels, it's back to this wide version of the image. Now, if you enjoyed this video, you're going to love my video linked right over here, which is on how you lazy load images, which is another way to get great performance gains on your site. Also, I highly recommend checking out the blog article for this video, as well as the video linked over here. They're going to be both linked down in the description below. They go into even more depth than I could in this video. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.